Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing cellular apoptosis. This is going to be sort of an overview of cellular apoptosis so you have an idea of what's happening. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and it really lets us make these videos on a daily basis so we can release them regularly. With that being said, let's discuss cellular apoptosis and let's start off by getting an overview of cell injury. Usually our cells have the ability to adapt to certain stresses based off of, you know, how uh, the cell changes via hyperplasia, hypertrophy, or metaplasia. Now, when the level of stress actually exceeds our cell's ability to adapt to the stress, you are going to have cellular injury occur. At the end of the day, you have many different ranges of injury, and these this type of damage, these uh, cellular damage processes, occur in two main stages. The first, you have the reversible stage, hallmark, which is cellular swelling where a cell just grows and then you have the irreversible stage where you're going to see membrane damage not just of the cell but of the mitochondria as well and lysosome and this is very important especially when it comes to apoptosis okay very important now this is the hallmark schematic you need to just commit to your memory when you have a normal cell and some sort of stress is placed upon the cell it's going to go into a reversible cellular injury phase after it cannot adapt to that stress now keep in mind we have a bi-directional arrow telling you that it can go back to the normal stage if the stress goes away or gets lessened at the end of the day if there's too much stress and it continues and uh, the cell can't handle it you're going to go from the reversible stage to the irreversible stage and once you hit this stage right here cellular death is eminent you cannot avoid it no matter what it's going to happen. So cellular apoptosis is a small scale cell death that's happening. Okay, Remember we talked about cellular necrosis in the previous video. That is a large scale cell death. Cellular apoptosis is a small scale death that's happening at the cellular level. Essentially this is cellular suicide and it is programmed. Okay, It is programmed predetermined often or it can be induced but is it is essentially programmed cell death one thing that i always forget is that cellular apoptosis is actually reliant on atp you need atp to kill off your cells especially from the cellular apoptotic uh standpoint like i said earlier Cellular apoptosis is genetically programmed. It is programmed cell death. Now, this programming can happen by the cell itself or it can be induced by other cells. Like, for example, cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells can kill off other cells by causing them to go through apoptosis by activating those genes that are pro-apoptotic genes. At the end of the day, another thing you need to remember is that apoptosis can happen at a single cell level or a small group of cells as well. That's not going to happen at a mass cell level because at a mass cell level, you go through cellular necrosis, not apoptosis. Okay, very important. So the mass level, it's not going to happen in a small group. It can happen. Some examples of cellular apoptosis that occurs physiologically and normally are uh, the endometrial lining that sheds during menses. That's normal. Okay, you have CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells that I talked about earlier that can induce uh, cellular apoptosis on other cells as well as embryogenesis. In embryogenesis, you do have apoptosis occurring. You might be thinking it doesn't occur, it's just growth, but you actually have uh, uh, apoptosis occurring. So these are actually physiologic apoptosis processes apoptosis sorry okay so let's talk a little bit more about apoptosis like we said earlier apoptosis actually requires ATP as well as functioning caspases or enzymes that are required for cellular degradation. The caspases are actually the key mediator of apoptosis. That is very important to remember. They're going to break down the cytoskeleton as well as degrade the DNA. And when they degrade the DNA, they're also going to activate the endonucleases that are going to cut the DNA at the internucleosomal regions. Is this high yield? No, this is not high yield. What is high yield that you need to remember is that essentially when cellular apoptosis is going down, this is going to result in segments that are multiples of 100 180 base pairs in the DNA. DNA segments that are multiples of 180 base pairs. This is a very sensitive indicator of apoptosis. This statement is high 
yield as f because this is something that can be given to you in a question stem. For example, they could say that PCR was done or gel electrophoresis was done and what researchers found were multiples of 180 base pair uh, DNA fragments. What is the mechanism that is happening? And that mechanism is apoptosis. Now, obviously, they're not going to ask you just that. They're going to ask you what type of mechanism or what's the, uh, what's the pathway mechanism that's also happening. So you need to know a little bit deeper uh, than just apoptosis and uh, 180 base pairs. You need to know what is exactly going on, which we're going to discuss in the upcoming lectures. But for now, keep this in the back of your mind. The resulting segments that occur when caspases do degrade uh, the DNA and they activate the endonucleases are going to be 180 base pairs long, okay? that Another way I remember that, by the way, was that normally a cell is moving forward, right? It's going forward at this direction and then it decides to kill itself. It wants to kill itself. It wants to off itself. When that happens, you have a 180 degree turn to go backwards. I don't know. That's just something I use. Maybe it helps. Maybe it doesn't. But that's how it's stuck in my mind. Now, one thing to remember about cellular apoptosis is that cellular membranes are actually going to stay intact. Unlike necrosis, in necrosis, in cellular necrosis, you actually have degradation of cell membranes. And when you degrade your cell membrane, you are going to release intracellular components Okay, and that is going to lead to inflammation. Cellular apoptosis, inflammation, cellular apoptosis does not have any inflammation associated with it. Because A, this is not a large scale kill off or a large scale die off of cells. It's a small scale. And at the same time, the cell membranes remain intact. So the intracellular components that are going to cause the local or regional uh, tissue to get inflamed are not being released. They're staying inside the cell. Very, very important thing to remember. This is what cellular apoptosis looks like at the histology with the slide level. You see this cell where the arrow is pointing at. This cell is very pink. If you zoom in a little, let's just talk about this really quickly. The cell's nucleus does not seem as distinct as, let's say, this nucleus, very distinct nucleus. And if you look at this cell right here, you can see the cytoplasm right here is less pink. This cell cytoplasm is very pink, number one. Number two, the nucleus is a little degraded. It's a little less dense. And essentially, this is a hallmark appearance of a cell that's undergoing apoptosis. Apoptotic cells are characterized by deeply eosinophilic cytoplasms and basophilic nuclei. High yield to remember, but just remember this, right? Remember the cell that we talked about earlier. This is what an apoptotic cell looks like. In an apoptotic cell, the nucleus is going to shrink. Okay, it's going to break down, and it's going to break down through the classic hallmark progress or process of nuclear shrinkage that we've discussed in previous lectures: uh, the pycnosis, karyorexis, karyolysis. Okay, in pycnosis, you're going to have the nucleus shrinking from a normal size to a smaller size, like this. Okay, let's make this nucleus bigger so you can tell. It's going to shrink. Then you're going to go through karyorexis where fragmentation is going to occur because of that whole endonuclease mediated cleavage that we were talking about. This nucleus is going to fragment like this. And then eventually you're going to go through karyolysis where the nucleus is going to be no longer there. It's just going to be completely degraded. Okay, That is the process of nuclear breakdown. And when it comes to cellular apoptosis, there are two main pathways you need to be aware of. That's the intrinsic pathway where a cell is killing itself from a inside of itself. This is more intracellular. And then you have the extrinsic pathway where some external factor is activating these genes and it's going to cause the cells to start to kill themselves off. Both pathways involve caspases and both of them are going to involve cellular breakdown. Very important to understand. Now, In our upcoming videos, we're actually going to discuss both the intracellular uh, uh, pathway and then we're also going to have another video where we're discussing the extracellular pathway. So stay tuned for those videos. If you want to check them out, they're going to be available on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And while you're there, don't forget to let a friend know who might find these videos useful. We really appreciate your support and we'll see you back here real soon.